So here we can see that we have defined all the fields for the key resource manager structure. In particular, the list entry is already known from Ghidra, so we've defined it for the different field. The list entry is two pointers, one for the next, which is called flink, and the one for the previous. And we can see the different list entries, and also the Unicode string is known. All of the other ones, we've defined them as a, an array, which is a string of particle size. What we can check is that all different offset matches, for instance, TM is at offset 168. And that the whole structure is the right size. Now we validate that. Now we can change the resource manager is accessed at different places and all the time it makes sense. Here it's accessing the TM pointer, here it's accessing the enlistment head, which is the list entry. Here it's, it's passing the mutex. Here it's, it's testing the state. And here it's accessing the enlistment head, list entry and accessing the flink pointer. Now we're going to look into renaming different variables into that function. So we know this is related to cookies. So we use the L key. This is set to false. So Ghidra detected it as a, a Boolean. Here we have an access to resource manager and it's my head. So we know this is a list entry, but for now we're just going to call it an it's my head. And this is an it's my head flink. This is uh, the current one. The idea is to get an idea of what it's trying to do. So here we can see it's actually retrieving something and then doing a or with an actual 80 hex. So this is probably a mask. So here it's looping between Anisma head and Anisma head fling. So it looks like it's actually trying to go over all the Anisma of, of the lists. This looks like it's a mask as well. It's quite hard to know what it's doing because it's taking elements from an isma head and then going over the blink or the flink. So we'll leave it for now. Okay, we have renamed everything we could so far. So we want to be defining all the functions prototypes that are being called into that function. We've done ke wait for single object already. So let's look into ke release mutex. We can see it takes two arguments, a mutex and a weight boolean. And it returns along. So now we can see it takes zero as the second argument. What about up ob reference objects? You can see it takes only one argument, which is the case already.
If we go down, there is TMP set notification resource manager. So unfortunately, this one is not documented. So we can't really rely on the internet to give us the arguments. So we'll have to figure that out one way or another. And that's pretty much all we can do regarding function prototypes. So now that we have defined everything for the tm underscore vuln.sys, we want to be doing the same for the actual patch version. So we can see that similarly to the vulnerable function being all renamed with everything, we have done the same for the patched file. We've tried to use consistent names matching the vulnerable file, so it's easier to diff it. You see we've defined the functions, we've defined the variables, and we've defined the function prototype we know. Okay. So we are now going to compare the vulnerable version with the patch version. So to do so, we just uh, copy the whole function with Control C into a file. I'm going to call it vuln.c. And then we do the same for the patch version. Now we're going to use uh, a tool like WinMerge to compare these two versions. So we're going to give the pass to the vuln.c and the pass to the patch.c and compare. So there are a few things we can tell. The first is that uh, the variables have different names, but probably due to the different stack layout. So we don't care about that. Then we see that only the unknown two boolean is defined, the unknown one is not defined. So if you see it's not set anymore in the patch version compared to the previous version where it was set to false initially. So this is just updating unknown. Here there is an interesting change. We see that uh, in the patch version instead of checking the the value 3 or 4 they actually check that it's less than 5. So step 2 plus 3 equals 5. So it looks like they're actually checking that it's either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 instead of just 3 and 4. Here we see the different stack viable names being different, but the accesses and the offsets are the same. So it's probably not interesting. Here the test is done the other way around. So instead of testing the boolean be unknown to, they test the be unknown to. So the, the if condition is actually the other way around. So it's possible it's due to the actual decompiler and Ghidra uh, decompiler logic. So it would be nice if we could just revert the if condition just to make it easier to diff. And that's pretty much for this function. So in order to make the diff more readable, we're going to invert the if condition. So this is going to be inside the if be unknown to. And this is going to be part of the else condition. Just going to add some annotation so it's actually inside the if. And the last thing we can note is that bnext label, if we go into that else case, it's going to actually jump into the bnext. And in bnext, all it does is it retrieves the enlistment head flink. So we could actually just duplicate that because after it goes there, it will actually loop again inside the while loop. So removing the jump and just adding the actual code is equivalent. 
So now we're going to diff again the villain.c and patch.c. Just going to ignore, uh, make sure that you have ignore changes for the white spaces just to avoid spaces and tabs to be considered changes. So again, we have the stack variables. We can see BN noun is not used anymore. And when we reach the actual if condition, now we see the code is pretty similar. So there is a call to TMP set notification resource manager. We can see the differences on the actual stack variable. So this is not relevant for us at the moment. And so if we go into this if case, we see that there is a check on some member into the Anisman head structure. And it's going to set the unknown Boolean, which we know is not used in the actual patch version. So they don't set that plug anymore. The other difference is that initially, it would check the resource manager state to be different than two. And if it's different than two, it would exit. You go to the, the end of the function. Here, it not only does it check the state, but it also checked the transaction manager, the TM pointer, as well as some offset 40 into the TM structure. And after that, if it doesn't exit, it doesn't go to B end, it will actually always update the Anisman head flink with the actual resource manager Anisman head flink. But in the vulnerable one, it wouldn't do that. It would actually go over here and then do a check on the B unknown flag. And then depending on if and be unknown is set or not, it would either get the Anisman head flink from the resource management Anisman head similar to the patch, or it would go to B next, which is it would actually get the Anisman head from the current one. So there is a difference here. And in the elf case, in the patch version, it will always retrieve it from the Anisman head flink, which is again, not the case on the vulnerable one. So it's interesting because basically what it's doing is that in the patch version, it doesn't rely on a flag anymore. And it always retrieves the Anisman head flink from the Anisman head from the head of the list. But before that, it would actually rely on a flag. And depending on the, that flag, it would either retrieve it from the Anisman head of the list or from the current pointer. So it definitely looks like some kind of race condition, use after free vulnerability. So one thing we haven't discussed yet is that in the actual code, um, it actually accesses the Anisman head of the resource manager and then it retrieves the flink pointer. And then we can see it loops over all of them until it reaches the, the head of, of the list again. But the interesting thing is that when it actually does something with the current one, we can see it sometimes accesses an index two, which is positive, but sometimes it actually accesses a negative index. It can be quite weird at first. So one thing to note is that the array index two is not really relevant because here it's actually uh, not defined as an actual type. So that's why it's the list entry, but it should actually be a structure, which we don't know at the moment. And the negative index is weird because it means it's actually trying to index before the pointer. So it can be a little bit weird. So we'll see why later in the training. But basically, if you think about it, it's probably because the pointer is inside a structure, in the middle of the structure. So actually doing minus five makes it go at the beginning of the structure, and then it can access fields based on the beginning of the structure. So to summarize this part, we've seen that actually just reversing statically gives, gives an idea of the kind of vulnerability that has been patched. However, it's quite hard to actually understand exactly how to exploit this, if it's exploitable, what are the different objects being involved. And one of the first thing we want to do is to actually understand the kernel transaction manager, the KTM environment, what are the different functions we can call, and actually how to reach that TM recover resource manager. So we can actually debug this function and see the different fields values and how to go in a different if while loops and see in real life what is happening. In particular, it would be very interesting to see uh, the Anisman head uh, structures confirm the negative offset and understand exactly what the bug is. So yeah, that's pretty much all we can do so far. The next thing will be about understanding KTM internals.